When Stewart invited me to speak at this symposium to introduce my new research project, Vigothic, and thanks. As a new member of the DigiPal family, the Visigothic PAL, I was thrilled and quickly started to think about how to present it, condensing all the technical and epistemological implications it covers. When I finished reading his email, however, as the structure of this paper became progressively defined, it was quite clear to me that I could not merely speak about the project, focusing on how it could benefit from the application of digital paleography and particularly of the DigiPal software. Bigothic, although focused on the study of some specific codices written in Visigothic script through their detailed analysis aided by DigiPal, goes far beyond these sources to reach all Visigothic script production. It is a starting point aimed to change the field, how we work with, understand within a cultural context and use, particularly for historical and paleographical research, any manuscript source first written or copied in Visigothic script. We are very few people working, unfortunately, with Visigothic script manuscript sources from a paleographic art point of view, looking at the text as a shape and not as a meaning, leaving aside momentarily the text to focus just upon the script. Our work is, however, the foundational basis of many projects devoted to the historical, artistic and cultural use of the sources under study. Analysis of musical notation, design of illumination programs, the use and abuse of diplomatic structures employed in the Varian Peninsula during the Middle Ages, for example, relies on us, Visigothicologists, specialists in the script, its characteristics and evolution, capable, at least in theory, of scientifically placing each graphic sample within its chronological and geographical context. The responsibility inherent to our research is, however, not always easy to assume, given the current state of the art. There is a reason, itemized in four main problems, that explains why Visigothic script is yet, and in comparison with other so-called national scripts, the big unknown. Difficulties, in my opinion, all likely to be solved with the progressive implementation of digital tools, among them DPAL, enhancing interdisciplinary teamwork. The first problem, we, the scientific community, do not know how many manuscript sources there are. Regarding the codices preserved, as a result of a project finished in the early 90s, there is a corpus of codices written in Visigothic script, which lists a total of 352. This catalog was compiled by the many scholars in the field working together, but once it was published, it seems its aim faded, since no research group kept it updated. Nevertheless, it is useful. I have used it as the basis of the online catalog of Visigothic script manuscript, manuscripts I added to my site, Litera Visigothica, where I intend to spread knowledge about the script. My catalog is still a work in progress I aim to continue. By now, I have listed seven codices more to add to the initial corpus, and as the archives update their catalogs, new codices in Visigothic script come to light. For example, the last time I checked the catalogue of the National Library of France, sorry, but my French is awful, I discovered six codices not included in the published corpus and dating from the 9th, 10th and 11th centuries, which, to my knowledge, have not been studied. As for the charters, there is no general catalogue, which means that to know how many there are for each regional variant, marked in the slide by colours, one needs to revise each one of the diplomatic collections published about each production center, if it exists, or directly search in the archives. This can lead to unexpected surprises. Years ago, I gathered and studied the charters written in Visigothic script produced in the area that now corresponds to Galicia. The amount of sources expected before my research was of around 20 exemplars. I found almost 200. In the last years, several digital projects divided by areas and focused on the historical information these sources contain started to compile those charters that had been previously edited. But besides leaving aside unedited sources, each one of these projects has its own editing criteria and software. So it is not, pos it is not possible, at least by now, to conduct a global search. 
While, they, while this first problem is important enough, in my point of view, it is not what is prevented the field from moving forward. It just makes any research based upon Visigothic script material unpredictable and more time consuming. The second one is more alarming. From the total amount of sources preserved, there are few that had been thoroughly studied. And even just considering these manuscripts, charters, and codices that have been edited and analyzed, we have a very limited idea of the specific graphic characteristics of their script, as always with some exceptions. Each scholar has applied its own criteria to conduct the analysis, focusing in some specific aspects of the script, and more usually has not added graphic proof to its conclusions, either due to copyright restrictions or the unavailability of digital techniques, or has not specified how it reached the assumptions it states to make other scholars able to understand and follow their process in describing the manuscript. Thus, not only these studies provide limited information, but by the way they are presented, it results challenging to take advantage of them to go further in conducting research on the script. That means that each time one wants to incorporate a manuscript source or group of sources to study some aspect of the script, for example, as in my case lately, how Visigothic evolved to Carlo and Minuscu, one needs to start from new. In close relation to the second problem, the third one, since sources have not been systematically analyzed, we cannot establish a graphic periodization of the script, and thus we cannot, besides studying its evolution, determine a date for those sources that lack this information. From the 352 codices in Visigothic script identified, 49 of these have colophons stating the production center in which they were written, the year and sometimes even the names of the authors involved copyist and illuminators. But the remaining 303 do not provide this information. For none of these codices has a detailed paleographical description been published. And this is a major problem, since in order to place those manuscripts in their chronological and geographical context, scholar, scholars need to compare their paleographical study with that of previously dated codices, or with charters known to be from the same area in which provide date that leave us with complex results for some sources. I have gathered in the slide some examples of the disparity between the scholars as for the proposed dates for some codices. Call me picky, but I don't think this should be acceptable. It's not reasonable to state that a codex could have been written in the 9th, or maybe in the 10th, or even in the 11th century, as it has not yet been decided for the Vatican 708. The last problem, as with the dates, it is quite problematic to determine from where a manuscript comes from, where it was more likely written, if it does not state so. Without knowing the characteristics of the script by geographical area and period by scribe, its hand cannot be compared. Therefore, it's not only difficult to accurately study a source that does not specifically include information about who, where, or when it was made, but to place it within its cultural context and thus use it as a source to reconstruct what was going on in its time frame or geographical area. I added in the bottom of the slide some of my favorite sentences when I go to try to find information about the graphic characteristics of some scribe. It's like, okay. Scholars have barely managed to scratch the surface even though nowadays digital tools and digitization, digitization projects allow new opportunities to tackle all these problems. Therefore, there is plenty to, of work to do regarding the study of Visigothic script and its manuscript sources. Please join me in this battle. Of <laughs> I may be too judgmental, still a critical approach to the field is needed. There are brilliant works about Visigothic script as well as thorough studies for some codices published. My purpose is to emphasize the lack of options until very recently when it comes to working collaboratively to advance the field, to be able to openly share our research. As I said, in my point of view, while the first problem, not knowing how many manuscripts there are, is important, the second one, not knowing their graphic characteristics, is crucial. Sources have been gathered, some have been manually and unsystematically studied, 
yet the results of their analysis are not, in general, usable for anyone else than the scholar who studied them, either because the criteria applied was not thorough or because the reasons upon which the conclusions have been stated are not specified or complemented with graphic examples. In this regard, I anticipate DigiPal will be especially useful, since it will not only allow me to work with several sources at the same time, developing the first digital database of Visigothic script graphic features, categorized by manuscript, scribe, letter, allograph, or sign, date, and production center, but also will let others use it, and maybe even collaborate and contribute to make the database bigger. In order to test the functionality of DigiPal applied to the study of Visigothic script, how to work with it, organize, and use the information it will gather, I needed to start somewhere with a specific corpus of sources. After a thoughtful search on open access, that, oh, <coughs> sorry, open access sources easily available, well preserved, dated, and localized, I focused my attention on the corpus of codices. The more logical choice became the collection of Visigothic script manuscripts kept in the British Library, more particularly the British Library Additional 11695, known as the Silos Beatus. This exemplar has been studied mostly by art historians, given the exceptional quality of its illuminations and by musicologists. Nevertheless, no polygraphic study has been published, although the Silos Beatus turns out to be the perfect case study, bearing in mind that it's one of the 49 codices that can be dated and placed with certainty and thus contextualize. Moreover, the large collection of codices preserved from this monastery allows to expand the project by exploring the graphic and historical relation of the Beatus with other coeval manuscripts also kept at the British Library. Once the corpus was decided, how to proceed? Here is the nitty gritty of the project Big Gothic. First come the detailed analysis of the constituent elements of the script as shown in the manuscript which I have already mentioned. The resulting graphic profile will differentiate how many scribes intervene in the codex and will define each hand, the stage of his professional career and cultural environment. The relevant features highlighted will be segmented and noted down with the corresponding information about the scribes and chronological stage of the composition of the codex, gathering by using digital a digital library of features and quantitative data for fut fut sorry, further study and contextualization. Next, the polygraphical profiles obtained for each scribe identified will be compared in detail with a special consideration given to those recurrent features that individualize each hand. Since all the scribes identified so far can be dated according to the historical notes added in the codex, the differences between their writing will be carefully studied to determine the aspects that rely on the development of the script in general as it progressively incorporated exogenous elements from the Carolingian writing system. This step of the project will provide a comprehensive schema of the graphic characteristics of the Visigothic minuscule script used in one prominent medieval center of the Castilian area as that of the monastery of Santo Domingo de Silos at different chronological stages. The next step will be to place the script's evolution in its graphic and cultural context by contrasting the information gathered in the previous steps against relevant literature published to date, especially that regarding the geographical and chronological contextualization of supposedly coeval codices, same production center and same period, such as British Library additional manuscripts 38, 45, 45 47, 48, 50, 51, and 55. This comparison will be highly beneficial for placing the Beatus, since its scribes likely collaborated in these other manuscripts too, and will establish a basis for future contextualization of still uncontextualized codices. In order to achieve each step of the project and make it useful for future research, and even without having testing digital yet, these are the foreseen benefits of its application. It will allow me to determine the specific corpus of the project and leave it open for future research. I could then add other manuscripts from silos combining digital surrogates from different archives. It will make it easier to conduct research with several manuscripts at the same time. And once the project grows, we'll speed up the work with larger amounts of sources. 
Since DigiPal is designed to describe handwriting, I will be able to mark the images with detailed descriptions or, fun or notes for future research. It will help to reconstruct the hand of a scribe from one <coughs> or several sources, the script used in a specific production center, silos, and in a particular period of time, the late 11th century, the cultural context of the British Library Beatus and its coeval manuscripts. Since DigiPal is a semi-automatic tool, the researcher selects the relevant features to build the digital library, it will allow me to determine and share the method needed for graphic analysis of Visigothic script manuscript. It will structure my research from the beginning, simplifying the comprehension of the research process carried out. The advances done conducting research will be easy to show and follow. And finally, other scholars could take advantage of my research promoting collaborative work. Bigothic is a two years long project aimed to facilitate and refine the study of Visigothic script and Visigothic script manuscripts to make the scientific community aware of the needs and possibilities of conducting research based on these sources and disseminate the research on the field already carried out or in progress. It intends to open the study of Visigothic script to everyone interested in manuscript studies. Bigothic is a starting point a pilot project to solve the four main problems above mentioned. If you want to know how it evolves, you're welcome to follow my progress in the site literavisigotica.com. Thank you. Thank you, Aina. And suddenly my project doesn't seem so overwhelming. Um, <laughs> Thank you. All. <laughs> all right, are there any questions for Aina? Um, with the corpus of data and data and sometimes localizable um, manuscripts, um, do they tend to do, do those um, manuscripts tend to cluster in particular places and periods, or do they are they distributed fairly nicely across? The, yeah, unfortunately. The whole geography <laughs> and, um, chronology yes. of, the, of the script. They they are distributed. And the problem is that, I think that the, pro the main problem is that you cannot trust what you are reading in this catalog. So they are distributed from both geographically and chronologically. But are you sure that this chronological uh, attribution is correct? I'm, I'm talking about the ones with colophons. Yeah, no, so yeah. yeah, the ones with colophons you can. And, and do, do they cluster, or are they well distributed? So you uh, could frame I, I'm not sure attention. about that. I think that will be maybe first half of the 12th century. And I'm sure that more, most of them will be from Castilia, because it was the area where scribes tend to be so nice with all of us for the future. Yeah. Uh, that was some sort of a follow-on question. As someone else who loves maps and visualizations, mm -hmm. I was struck by that map as well. And I really like from clustering. Yeah. All of especially along the very top of the north of Spain. And one thing that occurred to me, uh, and this stems from my ignorance, about the mobility of the scribes, yeah? Because you're locating the, the manuscripts to these specific areas, to the hand of the scribe, yeah? Mm -hmm. The scribe is from that area. Do the scribes not? Oh. They move, unfortunately. They do, yeah. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they, they, they did, they did, yeah. The problem is that since, I guess, we will need to revise the charters to know the scribes who were working in codices and then move. Because in other ways, we don't have any way to match them and to realize that they didn't belong to that particular place. So you have to locate them somewhere for... Yeah, but the best way to do that is by analyzing the charters. And if they are not even gathered, yeah. it's a bit of a problem. Yeah. I'm thinking of sculpture workshops. You know, we may have a sculpture workshop located here, so that's given the providence. But a sculpture may be on a 
job someplace else, you know, but it's still attributed to that workshop. Mm. So I guess it's the same. Yeah, no, it's exactly the same. I have been lucky and I was able to locate some scribes that were far, far from the place that they should be because the script was so incredibly different. But that was not the usual case, unfortunately. The relation between charters and codices. Well, we have a very big problem here. Uh, for the places we have a big amount of charters, we tend not to have a big amount of codices. So, for example, when I did my research for the PhD and I gathered the 200 charters for, from Galicia, it was nice and I was able to date them even without having this information within the charter from periods of 10 years. But we don't have any codex from Galicia. So all that information isn't useful for dating codices. Uh, in Leon, for example, they have a large collection of codices and a large collection of charters. They have been edited and studied, but not, no one has studied them together. And it's not possible to I don't know, to access the paleographical information of the scholar who has previously studied them. So it's like you can't start again. And you have maybe, I don't know, 10,000 charters, and maybe 100 codices from that the same area. So I'm sure that by studying the charters will be easier to uh, localize the codices, but if you want to analyze, I don't know, 10,000 charters, just let me know and I will be happy to help. <laughs> now the problem is that the information is there, is there, but there's no one mm, that has the time or the aim <coughs> of starting a project as big and large as this one, with your exception maybe, you, you are helping me to try to do it, so. Yeah, that's why I wanted to start for this, from these 49 codices that are dated and localized. So my aim is, after finishing this project, to continue adding these codices to Digipad and then use that information to try to make other scholars um, trust me when I'm saying that they need to apply digital tools. And with the hope they will add the study, the, the paleographical study of the charters to the database and then make something useful from a big database. Yeah. You kind of guerrilla paleography. Yeah, I, mean, I need people. The with their, with their phones. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I think that just you mentioned trust there, I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's that, you know, people yeah. trust you when you say that's your digital tools, and paleographers can trust you for those in the evidence. Yeah, it's what yeah, it's what you said before. When you have, I don't know if you remember when you had the, that link to share the library that you were using. If you have that for a biographical analysis of other people, they can not only trust your methods, but they can follow what you are doing and improve it. But if this process of images or data sets are not. Um, online or at least open, you cannot trust them when they are saying one thing or another if you are not seeing that. So I hope that by seeing me using it, they will be a little bit closer to get used to them. I think just in the kind of wider thing, we're moving towards uh, um, in a, a large degree of openness towards that. 
And I think all the English research people will say things like, well, the following word occurs 14 times in the corpus. Yeah. You know, how, can, how did they find that? I actually went to the dictionary of English corpus and did some search, but they may not disclose that openly. So it means you can't test it again and say, what did they do? Then people are moving away from that more, mm. being much more comfortable, I think, about saying, I use the digital resource. So, you know, digital humanities enabled me to do this. You know, and that's, again, something kind of the, yeah. the encouragement. So that's my, my aim, working with Digipal and trying to merge Visigothic and Digipal. We need help, we really need help, both from person work, persons working, people working with uh, analysis and digital tools, because I think it's the other way, the, the only way possible. Yeah. We are five, only five paleographers working in Visigothic script, and we have thousands and hundreds of codices. Um, Cannot, this cannot be done without the, the aid of digital tools. It's impossible. Hi. I just wanted to say, but surely this is a question of methodology, what you are highlighting. You know, I, I find it a bit uneasy when I hear people say, oh, I don't trust people who <coughs> worked on this in the past. Mm. Um, because um, surely they did have a methodology. And, uh, and in our own ways, now they were coming along, we somehow also need to build on those methodologies mm -hmm. because so that we might not be able to do the kind of same mistake if there of were course. mistakes. Because even a medieval colorful, and we we know lots of lots of research has been done into this, but that even a medieval colorful might not give enough the truth. Yeah. So if we really start talking about trust, then it means we, we should distrust everything. So probably I'm just wondering whether different way of thinking about and building on what you do. No, I don't, about, I mean, you know, I, I, don't, I don't distrust all the scholars. So I, I, I really use all the previous scholarship. And you know, the, the main book for Visigothic script is from, I don't know, 1884. And it's a great, amazing book. No one has ever done nothing better. The problem is that if previous scholarship publish something like the sentences at the bottom, how can you use that? There is no way to have any usable information from that. And that's my problem. But what is the context of that quotation? For and example, and yeah. And if and do they have an introduction that explain the rationale behind? No. Um, that's the thing. There is no. So it, there is none. These quotes are from the corpus of codices. So it's a corpus of codices. There is no previous general introduction about the characteristics of the script or whatever. Just the list of codices. Um, for example, the first one. It says, one specific manuscript presents all the characteristics of the script using whichever place you want. But to find which are these specific characteristics is impossible. Even if you go to all the articles published by this scholar, you will not find them. And this is why I don't trust them. It's not because of their methodology. The methodology we are using is more or less the same. The problem is that is you know the panoramic eye. They know that is more or less the same as that area, but they are not sure why. So the way of putting it is this one. And this is very stressful. I remember when I started studying the Galician Visigothic script, I was eager to find someone saying that that was a regional variant of, or why it was not a regional variant. No one ever, ever said something about that. The only things I found was, it doesn't seem quite the same as Northern Portuguese mm. Visigothic script. Why? No clue. And that's the thing. So it's not the methodology. I, I understand what you are saying, and I, I agree with you. The problem is the information that comes after that methodology was applied, <coughs> how they distribute the information they gather, that they are not actually distributing the information, I guess. 
thought you'd need is more of a scientific approach to the methodology in the sense that the, the scholarship needs to be reproducible, somebody else needs to be able to look at it. But one yeah. of the, the problems we have that you identified there is that we don't have the tools to quantify the difference. And it's very subjective. This scholar makes his assertion that this is this and that is that, yeah. the different right? but we, I don't know that we have the tools, and one of the things we should perhaps be looking towards is, is having tools that will um, quantify the differences between the character sets, so you can then construct a new database, which will then give you supporting evidence to make sense. But at least you know, at least to see them. This is this P is from northwestern Spain because the P from southwestern Spain is this one. You can see both and get your own conclusions, but it, there's no graphic proof. Thank you, I know that. Thank you.